um, really just easy for me as an artist to work with is that I don't have to custom author any type of light entity to make sure that it looks correct. Ray tracing just takes the value that the explosion has right, and does its thing really. Um, so for me it's, it's really, really convenient to work with. And same for explosions like this in complex services. I've often had art directors asking me, hey Jonas, could you make some cool shot in the car where do you then see see something that is, and then you turn the camera and you see another thing? And I, I just had to say like, no, I can't do that, because this is what I had before um, with SSR. But now with ray tracing, it really, for me as an artist, it unlocks more opportunities. It's a new tool in the toolbox for me that I can create new content in real time that has just never never been seen before, really. Um, so it's really really exciting for me to to work to work with ray tracing. Um, and then here we have the big Churchill crocodile tank. We can make that one shoot its flamethrower across our scene and see it moving across the surface here. See the flames reflecting in the ground, and the tram. All the soldiers, and again here, and ray tracing off, and this of course would not mean anything before, but now I have like I have a whole other thing that I can show off, which was just not possible without ray tracing. And it also works in, in the smallest details. Again, our, our detailed weapons here in the background, and then ray tracing on and off. And in objects that are far away, these C-47s up here, even in, in tough and complex services like the hood on the car right here, you can fly up, you can zoom in a little bit, and then you can see the C-47 reflecting in the car's hood. I can move up, you can see the glass, in the car, it reflects the, the buildings up there, and it yeah, reflects the planes, the entire environment. I mean, I just, I just get everything for free, basically, which is super convenient for me to work with. It's really efficient to work with. Um, also, big improvements in transparent surfaces here. Before, this is what we would have, but now with ray tracing, it's, not, it's no longer a static cube map that I have to work with. I have dynamic dynamically updating reflections. So if we wanted to show off destruction, which is a big thing in, in the Frostbite engine and Paddlefield, we can now see that within the window. We can see the, the building crumbling and falling apart, which before you just, you wouldn't get that, but now I can achieve that. And ray tracing is not just on these small, Object here, it's really on the entire environment, so now that we have the, the Epic B1 rocket in our new game, it's really very, very good at showing off the fact that it, it works on the entire scene. So now if I speed up the time again, you can pay attention on the windows, on the ground, and then once the B1 hits the ground here, you can see the flames scrolling through the window, reflecting off of the puddles in the middle, and then the B1, of course, it's force destroying all the buildings, blowing out the windows. Um, yeah, that's what I have in the demo here. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, up next uh, from Remedy. Oh, I think I, I, guess, I mean we still yeah. Okay. If, if you want to have time, we can jump into Yeah, exactly. So we still have some more exciting things that we can right. show off, actually. If, uh, Thank you. If you really want to, if, if we can get the demo up on the screen again. Yeah, there we go. Thank so, you. yeah, I mean, I can actually jump in the game as a soldier here. And we also saw some, some questions on the internet before. I was reading some comments saying that they were confused. The demo was running slow motion, so how will the game run in real time? And I mean, of course, it's... It's all fine, it's 60 FPS, it's solid, rock solid, run around. And a really annoying thing for me as a gamer has really been the, like, if I turn this SSR on, you can see how my, the clip on my weapon cuts off the rays in the reflection if you look to the bottom left. 
And the same thing when I'm, if I'm aiming down my sights, then if I just find a really good example of this, you can see it, it cuts off the reflection, which is just a really important thing to, to focus on. But with ray tracing, it's just, it feels a lot more just responsive and you don't get this blurred, but yeah, ray tracing is, it just gets you more immersed in the world and it, it feels really good to play with. It's, it's really great. So, so that's uh, one of the things that I really like the most with the result that we got, was that the scene with ray trace now is very consistent. Um, you see the reflections as you expect them to be and they stay there. Um, we still, in certain areas, need to apply a color distance, so in theory, maybe not everything at all points in time will be reflected, uh, or show the objects which are really, really far behind. But what we see with the performance on the machine that we have in here, that we can push the boundaries much further than what we thought was possible uh, up, to, uh, up to recently. So I'm, I'm really positive that we can get this to feel super consistent at all, at all times um, for, for the player. Of course, um, implementing all this in a large and complicated engine and very content-driven engine uh, like what we have in Battlefield 5 and Frostbite uh, is quite a massive engineering effort um, to make sure that we can translate you know, and understand that we did not only hit this triangle um, with this material, but also in, apply all the lightning models and the entire Frostbite's rendering model onto the re uh, reflected objects, including particles. Um, as you know, particles are typically rendered as very, very many um, additive transference triangles. So we kind of need to intersect all of those and with a really good approximation, sum up the uh, total value of all those intersections and then present that back to the uh, surface and, and apply the color from that, uh, from that result. Uh, and I think that the particles um, and the explosions and all this dynamic basis really worked out really well, I think. And it's also quite performant uh, now. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's uh, I think that's good, yeah. Alright? Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> you were you know you were restricted to imagining this. You know, you were in the front end of uh, the game and you were having to imagine you're fixing your mechs or buying mechs and for the, for the first time ever you're actually going to be able to physically wander around your hangar and here's where you can walk amongst your battle mechs, see the state of their damage, ongoing repairs, any customizations that you have going on. Basically be physically present to manage your unit. So as you can imagine this is the hub of our game. This is an incredibly important visual target for us. So the RTX technology really opens up things that would otherwise normally not be possible to a small developer like ours, both with the great Unreal Engine and with the NVIDIA RTX technology. We can, we can do things like this. So let's, we, first we're looking at this character and the, um, the shadows cast. If we can go to, uh, we turn off the RTX technology. I mean, it's really a stark contrast, it's just, you lose so much and when you turn it back on you just realize, you know, what you've been missing. <laughs> it's just maybe the, the technology now has really opened our eyes to what, you know, what we had before and what the limitations were. Uh, maybe we understand that more than ever now. And it just works, it just looks incredible. You can go over here to the, we look at the, some of the uh, shadows coming off the railings and you know, this just this kind of attention, this kind of detail you just get now. Some of the other presenters were talking about. It's just it allows us to not have to have. I, I don't even know how much our time. You know, it's, it saves a studio like ours. It's really immeasurable. So I'd like to take a look at the. So I guess this is BioTech is, is such a great universe because it's it's well into the future, but it's so recognizable. It's, it's still you can imagine this is what a you know, a hangar would look like somewhere where you would be repairing something today. And so this, in a science fiction environment like this, uh, this technology just really works so well uh, for these hard surfaces and this sci-fi environment. 
So we're going to open the hangar door and bring in our Shadowhawk uh, battle mech for some uh, repair work here. And I want to look, we'll focus in on the floor as the mech moves in. We really want to see just the types of reflections that we can now have with the RTX technology. If we look a little further down there, that's oil spills, messy technicians. We turn the tech, the RTX off. I mean, this is, I guess, my final point here today is just, if you look at the reflection of the glass over there, turn the RTX back on. And let's move a little bit behind the battle map here and take a look. This is, this is a real easy one. This is a softball one from here because it just works. And if you turn the RTX off, uh, this would be an example of something where we just would have to change the design of our hangar, probably, rather than trying to you know, make this work the old way, so. Um, that's, uh, it's been, it's just been incredible, and I just want to thank NVIDIA again, and we're, just one last point, just that we're going to, we're actively integrating and working with NVIDIA also on their, uh, the great new DLSS technology they announced. And so, thank you for your time today.